sweet. Oh, oh, it's got oh. goosebumps. For a kid to come up to Central, instantly you're going, what have I missed? Yeah, what's happening? There's not many worse feelings than that. G'day, we're the Bondi Lifeguards. Today, we're gonna have a look at some of the Lifeguard's biggest mistakes. Check it out. Roll the tape. Jake is having trouble following Mario's directions. Here, here, here. Turn off me. Lifeguards often use the walkway ramps along the beach to identify their positions. First, second, third and fourth ramps are key landmarks. You can see how easy those things make it to communicate. Yeah, You know, sure. like for, for all of us, to, they're the most important things. Me being in the tower, uh, I thought it was my duty to uh, help direct him as best we can. And uh, I sort of came in over the top and, and tried to help. Jake, if you can just go to... Uh, yeah, yeah, just in front of you there. <laughs> Singlets did the same thing, just in front of your head. Yeah, true. <laughs> I mean, but in front of him, that is yeah, a pretty yeah. clear communication. The swimmer gets closer to drowning. Yeah, that's a good rick, isn't it? That's a great rick. they got a very red face. Yeah, I said here, here. So you couldn't understand where it was. The problem has already drawn in three lifeguards. Then another. Mario, fourth ramp. You're in front of fourth ramp. Mario's got to learn to go by ramps. Anyway. Mario had said to him a couple of times over the radio, here, 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 and Jake got really confused. You've got to give me a location, Mario, so I know where you are. Here. <laughs> <laughs> this is right here. <laughs> I'm a bit pissed off at the moment. You know what that means. <laughs> He's going to be angry. Up to the tower and That's where the debrief be. Yeah. Down there, and uh, he was quite uh, annoyed. So yeah, bro, you, you pissed me off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was really fired up and really angry, and uh, just kept going at me. It was actually the one we called. He, yes, he yes, was that yeah. one over there. On yeah, the where, he, where he was when I said to him, in front of you there, because he was coming past the flag. No. Yeah, I knew where you were looking, mate. I was looking at it. Ah, uh, whatever. You were saying here, here. You can't say here, here on radio. He doesn't know. This must have been before they had air conditioning in the tower. <laughs> Things are getting a bit hot. <laughs> getting a bit hot in there. Then at the end, I said, "Not there." I said, "Not there. Here. <laughs> right here." Mate, he was heading down. No, I'm not a grip, bro. Well, I don't agree either. Because yeah, so whatever. <laughs> Tim Miser's credit, he did on the radio say a couple of times on the north side, but yeah, yeah that, those landmarks are critical, but I, I like this, hey? I like when the boys, you know, if there's any issue, they just come in, have an argument, nut it out, work out who's right or wrong, probably don't believe each other and go back to their day, but at least it doesn't linger on. I don't mind seeing a bit of fire, at least it shows everyone cares about their job and mm. how much we care about keeping people safe. And then of course, because I was under stress too, I probably vented back. Are you going to be an idiot or are you going to like try and see an idiot? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They've been fire. like this for years, eh? It's so funny. They've got this weird relationship they love hate. We need to get boxing gloves down the beach. <laughs> if this ever happens again, straight down into the tunnel for a quick yeah. three minute round. Yeah, I've actually never seen it blow up like that in the tower. No, neither. It's very stressful and heated in there. Yeah. Like you think if something like that goes wrong, it's it, of course you're going to yeah. be combative because you're both wanting the same outcome. Exactly. Everyone wants the same outcome. Yeah. And it's to have a good, safe day. Yeah. And when you're trying your best and you're trying your best and it's completely crosswise, you just and and if you're Italian, yeah, yeah, mate, the translation barrier blows as well. up. I always liken this job to. It's like, you know, when you're in your 20s and you do a road trip to the Gold Coast and you drive for nine hours straight. I mean, we do 30, you know, 12 hour, 13 hour days now with 12 hours with a lunch break. But I mean, it's a long time to be concentrating. And that's when I just sleep on the way to the Gold Coast for <laughs> well, you're, else drives. you're a bit of an exception. You do that lifeguarding too sometimes on the first day, bed. But I mean, it's, it, it, it's hard and, and it's, it's stressful and it's tiring both mentally and sometimes physically when you're doing a lot of rescue. So, it's surprising this doesn't happen more. Yeah. Have you ever had any blow ups at work with people? Oh, I've definitely had problems with communication. Um, I remember one time someone didn't check the gear right and I just happened to check it about, I uh, just checked it when I was standing there and it had a massive hole in the bag valve. And I went up and told who was on that day, I won't name names, but, and we had a bit of an altercation over it. I said, you didn't check the gear. Like you gotta check the gear. And then we did a resus that afternoon. Like, and yeah. we would have had a resus with a broken bag valve, which, I don't know. I just think it's, you know, we've got to do our, do the things right. But, yeah, yeah. I, things like that are non-negotiable. Up in the tower, Mario and Singlets have some unfinished business. <laughs> the hug. Yeah, oh, for sure. Cuddle. Mother loves a cuddle. Job done. Done. 
come seven o'clock, we, we sort of crossed paths and uh, we glanced looks at each other and then just gave each other a, a big hug. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Kiss and make up. <laughs> I was up in the tower and I spotted a few people in trouble down at Backpackers. Oh yeah, palm up. Over the radio for the South Rhino to respond to it. Yeah. South Rhino, you're on that, obviously. And um, there was a bit of a pause. Radio down. No one responds. Harry's believes the call must be for him. I have to say it again, I didn't pick that up that well. In turn, Mouse is led to believe Harry's must be in the south end buggy. I was just letting you know we're watching what you're watching, those two guys. But Harry's is positioned in front of the north flag. Miscommunication. The public find his bearings on the beach. Harry's got no idea what he's it's, talking about. It looks bad, but it isn't bad. It's, you know, it just kind of goes off the shore. Wrong end of the beach. Yeah. No, I don't know. I'm looking at guys that look like they're semi-drowning, eh? <laughs> very, very bad right now. You know, I started to get worried. Like, what's Harry's doing? Who's down south? Mouse, yeah, what's the location? Backpackers, two guys. You're going to have to go in for sure, I reckon. Oh, I'm, I'm up the flags. Heavy! What did I say Harry's or did I say South Rhino? Oh. How's the doubt? Yeah. Like, Mouse is one of the best lifeguards you've ever had. In the tower, on the beach, whatever. Like, so controlled and calm. Yeah. But the minute, like, it's going pear-shaped, he starts... First thing is you question yourself. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Have I said the right thing? Did I call the right buggy? Did I, you know, like, did yeah. I call the wrong right ramp or whatever? Like, it's... Yeah. It's amazing how quick it escalates, but... <clears throat> I'm not sure what whoever was down south was doing. <laughs> We're about to find out. Eventually, I, I realised... Got that boys down the end. It was actually Ryan that was down south of Backpackers. Ryan doesn't realise that Mouse is referring to swimmers directly in front he of He can't see him. ...at the south end buggy. Ryan, straight in front Radio must be off as well. Backpackers. Until Mouse oh, there him. goes the hand. He can hear now. I would be lying if I didn't say there's a little bit of panic, because... That's the worst feeling. You, know, you yeah. don't know how long they've been in trouble. There were two patients, a girl and a guy, and the girl was furthest out. Yeah, they're proper in trouble. Clearly the bloke went to help her. <laughs> but we used to have radios that would go, like and make like a screeching siren noise if they went off too close together. So I know I've definitely been caught out a couple of times where you're in the tower, someone else is using theirs, so you turn yours off or turn it right down and then you go back out on the beach and forget to turn it up and the radio is without doubt our most important communication oh, tool. Obviously, yeah. Look how close they are, they're like 20 metres off the beach. She didn't have much left in her, did she? Literally could have touched the sand within 30 centimetres and he couldn't do that. I know people drown in bathtubs. So I knew I had to frantically get out there to him before he drowned. So he's going to be shitting himself. Not only did they do a miscommunication, like he was at the other end of the beach. Like, and then to actually have to go back there yeah. and then see the person drowning, he would have been in his head thinking, I can't believe I didn't hear that right. And this is touch and go. For sure. I think uh, the worst part as well is he thought it was for him just because no one else replied. Mm, only because Ryan didn't hear it. So he's thinking, I'm in trouble because there's someone in front of me and there's no one there, he's like, oh, well, where actually is this person? Because Mouse isn't going to be wrong, there's someone in trouble. Well, Ryan must have missed it as well. Yeah. It seemed like he was kind of on it, but, I mean, Central's yeah. got the hugest role there. He's got the whole beach. Yeah, and sometimes he's probably watching South as well. Yeah, fully. Oh, well, Harry's would have been panicked for sure when he was coming back from North. I thought the call was for Harry's when, yeah, actually it was for me. I wonder if we could like go back to the video ref and see what Mouse did actually say. I thought he said South Corner. He definitely. He definitely said I South Corner. He said South Corner. Yeah. Yeah. South yeah, Rhino, you're on the right, obviously. Try, Mouse, you were in the right. <laughs> I reckon that's like a really good lesson, and I, and I, I reckon some of these things we could actually show back when we're having like our team training days. Um, there's heaps of lessons that we learn obviously from, you know, work and, and on the beach experience and for new guys, things like that. And, and then guys discussing, yeah, well, you know, it's on your hip, but it's probably better to sit in the dash because you can hear it better in the wind and those sorts of things. And I, and I hopefully, 
you know, the less communication breakdown, the safer everyone is, us included, as well as everyone on the beach. Yeah, I agree. We're absolutely blessed to have, you know, we pretty much got our own film crew down there and we can look back. I mean, we do it with resuscitations and stuff. We should be using it, using it in situations like this operationally. Midday and Jethro heads in for a rescue at back. panic there. Then Harrison identifies more people in trouble further yeah. south. On the south corner. That's just on five of them. But Drifting Mouse there. is unresponsive. Mouse, did you copy that? Oh, even the best do it. Once I heard him on the radio, I didn't really get a, a, a reply back or a confirmation. Mouse, hello, Mouse. That's also massively the case when you know, like if me and you drove down there together and you were like, oh, there's four people in the water that need help and we both go in, that's like the biggest danger is like both lifeguards leaving the beach. It's just as dangerous as having one sitting on the beach whose radio's not working or is down or something like that. Like once that communication line's broken, then anything can happen really. Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what happened in this situation, but we do get caught out a lot because as you mentioned before when there's two radios really close together in the same buggy the other guy will naturally turn his radio down so you don't get the screech so he can communicate how often do you just knock a channel or turn the volume down and you think nothing of it yeah. and then you are blind like deaf you're basically not even Maybe on the beach well, yeah. it's just simplest mistake can have catastrophic yeah. outcomes it's sometimes crazy sometimes when you realize you're on the wrong channel as well it's just like your heart <laughs> stopped like what have i done oh no i haven't and, heard anything we had once where it's totally stopped like channel one was down really at, at the repeater or something wow. i was in central just going no one could hear me i'm like what the f harrison turns to kerbox box can you hear me who is at the other end of the beach yeah copy mate on my way with both jethro and kerbox in the water and mouse so Box didn't even go south. Box is in... I don't know where Mouse is. is Ma was Mouse with Jethro Mouse. then? Yeah, Mouse was with Jethro. Box is going in for another rescue somewhere else. Gotcha. Down north. Mouse! Hate to be Harrison right now. Can you get on that Watching people up? drown in front of you. No problem with his radio. Yeah, I'm on it, Harrison. Sorry, mate. Jethro! See how calm Mouse is though? Yeah. It's pretty cool, you need that. A volunteer lifesaver has saved the day. Yeah, by the time I got to this poor guy, he didn't have much left in him. I guess um, the lesson learned from this whole radio incident is just to always be aware of your line of communication. If, um, especially in those moments where there's a lot going on, if you haven't heard something on the radio, check your volume. For me, I'm forever checking my radio yeah, yeah, volume. Yeah. I mean, because I've, I've been in exactly the same situation Mouse has had on numerous occasions, and I think you only get caught out once or twice, and then it almost becomes a, you know, I've been off work for 18 months now, so it's going to be, get back in the habit of always checking it's my radio It's been so volume. peaceful on the radio <laughs> since you've been gone. Yeah, I reckon it goes to show, like, even the best of the lifeguards down at Bondi, especially, like, Mouse, he, he's obviously one of the team leaders there, and even him making the mistake of just having the volume off. It's like you need to check it like regularly. Yeah. Because it's it can be a while if it's, especially if it's a quiet day. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah. don't know and then but you're totally yeah. deaf to everything. Doesn't surprise me two of the mistakes are just because of miscommunication. But man. again, like mouse, like that's kinda like how the Ambos rock up when you're doing a CPR, you're terrified and they just talk, hey going, guys. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But like he just had that so cool, calm. calm head on him. Yeah. And you know, being frantic's not gonna help that yeah. situation at all. It's and like, righto, let's go. Yeah. We're, we're on here. So I was sitting down south corner with Maxi on the rhino uh, and I glanced across uh, down to the next rip and noticed uh, three heads in the in the water. Oh no, this is, I think this is the one I'm thinking so of. I said to Maxi, we should probably go down and, and have a look at these three. They didn't look like strong swimmers. Singlet, you're going to have to go in. That one's putting his hand up. Yeah, sorry, Jess, the ones in front of us, mate. Yeah, copy. The one out the back put their hand up. Yeah, copy. Obviously, you go for the person out the back first. Wait, wait, wait. Not if the one in shore's drowning. Out the, out the back, there's one out the back. That's um, one of the hardest things to wrestle with if you see three or four people yeah. and they're all drowning, but the severity of the drowning. Yeah. Like yeah. one's got seconds, that guy's, you have to make that 
That's quickest decision. decision. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you paddle past them and they're like, I'm drowning, but you're not drowning yeah, as yeah. much as the person's Especially drowning. Especially if there's no one behind you as well. Fully. Like if you're solo as well, you know that you can't get to that person in the next 30 seconds. Yeah. So you, you got to make those go go gadget arms yeah. just to get do, 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 and you do sometimes yeah. you find yeah. a way but like it, it seems so like i can't believe you're paddling past yeah. me but they don't realize you should see behind yeah, yeah. that that person's going under because they've all got tunnel vision it's like fight or fly like just help me help yeah. me help yeah. me so yeah but sometimes as well we get surfers which is very lucky like oh. sometimes if the furthest person for me in that south corner has been the worst i've put the board amongst three people and yelled out to a surfer mm, come come and grab probably. them come and grab that one person so we can just float these three yeah use your resources yeah are you all right no no <laughs> <laughs> i got out to the patient and the patient was uh you know in a sort of i guess a real struggle and uh, I could hear the megaphone from the beach, uh, which was- Oh, go further. Go singlets. further. Go oh, God. Singlets, keep going out, mate. Okay, I've got to go. I've got to go for another gotta one. Got to go. See ya. Keep going out, mate. Can you go in with this? You all right? I've got to be back. That's the decision, That's eh? Exactly like, you just got to let them go. There's someone actually going under or underwater out the back of the break. So, Maxie's got him to get rid of one patient to go for someone further out. and. Sounds by Maxie's tone in his voice that it's it's an emergency and singlets would be thinking, mate, what am I going for out here? Is there someone face down? Being told to go out the back and then not finding someone out the back. Yeah. It's like- Confusion. It, well, like, exactly what he said. He, he thinks they're under, under. Yeah. And then that's just catastrophe. Like, that's a drowning. Yeah. Well, you'd you imagine gotta, Jesse was watching someone to send him past that person. For sure. And even in Central then, he's going, no, go at the back. Yeah. So he's still got vision, but he doesn't. It's a big difference with those binoculars. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got to, you know, only so much you can see on a board. Especially if they're out far enough past the break, you're not even looking there sometimes. Yeah, it's like you're in the rip, and if someone's telling you to get further, you're like, these guys could be miles. Mm. Did he get in? I don't know. Oh, he can't oh, see it now. Preparing for a possible drill. Oh look, carrying the defib. Race down with a defibrillator and wow. oxyviva kit. It's never a good look when they're taking the defib. I think someone's just gone under, boys. Maxi rescues one woman and learns it was just her and a friend who has now returned to shore. You right? You just want? I'd left uh, the patient to go out and have a look for a patient that wasn't there. Yeah. That's pretty lucky. Threw him a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Good practice drill. Oh, she's angry. That's a classic example. She yeah. she fully felt that, that I was left to the slaughter. To, yeah, like, to how drill. dare you leave my drowning friend? Yeah, yeah. But no, we're going to someone else. A, a higher level of danger. So we thought. In hindsight. In hindsight. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> no wonder she was pissed off. You paddled out here catching no one back and you yeah, just watched them spin around from the hand out. Oh. Have you ever had a patient blow up at you for rescuing them? No, nah, not really, eh? No. Nah. Like, she was pretty rude. Like, yeah. probably would have sent her back in <laughs> for another <laughs> swim. But you, I mean, often you don't get a lot of thanks. No. Nah. You kind of get used to that. Occasionally you get someone really nice that actually goes out of their way to come and thank you later or. Whatever, but yeah, it's pretty rare that you rescue someone and get blown up. But <laughs> technically, he didn't really rescue her. He just gave her an option to live and then sort of paddled away from us. So, um, I can see how it might have looked. Yeah, I'd been. be off singlets too if you did that to me. <laughs> I had one lady blow up at me once. It was massive surf and she um, she wanted to go out there. And, and I said, you don't want to go out there with me working at <laughs> I said, because if you get into trouble, you're on your own. I remember when and she was losing it at me and I and she said I've got flippers. I said, I don't care, mate, it's twelve foot out there. Like yeah, you're not going out. I said I said, today's not your day. Come back tomorrow when it's a bit smaller. And she just like absolutely roasted me and I just said, and sometimes you've got to argue with people for their own safety. Lifeguards are inundated as more and more victims seek assistance. She's in a bad way. Their eyes are momentarily off the water when a boy sprints from South End. Oh, it's got goosebumps. Luke and Terry race down. Tezza, oh, Tezza. Backs up with a defibrillator. Look at the shit going on there. Like, yeah. what are you to do? Like, there's there's people in trauma crying their eyes out, and then for a kid to come up to Central 
instantly you're going, what have I missed? Yeah, what's happening? There's not many worse feelings than that when someone from the public comes. Like you can be busy doing something and you can't have, you know, you don't have two sets of eyes in your own head. So that, that would be a horrible feeling. It's the worst. And you know that it's serious when people start grabbing defibs. I've had it so straight, many times. Straight away. You're just like, it's the worst feeling ever. Cause you think, the first thing you think is like, if we haven't spotted it, how long have they been in trouble? Yeah, exactly. How bad are they? And the, the, I reckon the drive down is horrible because you think you think the worst, right? Especially the longer you've been there, the worse you think. How do we miss that? Blue bottles. Well, what's happened is we've been kind of dealing with blue bottles, I suppose, and everyone's kind of busy or missed something down the south corner. Oh, no, get around. Who's with this girl? I'm her mother. Oh, okay. Yeah. Conscious, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Got a heart, well. Maxie monitors her pulse. <laughs> I wonder how she got in. The girl is in shock and may have taken in water. This is just another prime example. They've just made their first mistake in everyone attending one thing, and now it looks like they've got four lifeguards down here again at another rip when there's probably no one up the other end of the beach now. It's something happens so at every, the every, both buggies have come down thinking that it's yeah. a recess or something, and then probably a prime example of another thing happening. Like yeah. how they, or it's a snowball effect and how everything happens at once. Mate, just stand by. Um, the chick's stable, we've got her on oxygen. She's a bit tired and uh, a bit shock, but uh, I think we'll get an ambulance just to get it checked out. She's 13 years old, girl. Just that scene. <laughs> You know, from looking away and just seeing that ring of death, oh, okay. couple of buggies. Um, it's like, oh my God, how many times have you seen that? Yeah, it's a horrible, horrible, horrible thing to see if you're always sitting in the tower too, like, cause you just know there's stuff going on down there that you can't mm. help with. But yeah, when you're inside it, like, how's those resources on busy days when, you know, there's 100 or 200 people ringing around and yeah. people are screaming help and do this and do that. It's, it's a pretty intimidating place to be. In the tower, lifeguards prioritise who to treat. Mate, can you just go away? We've just got someone drowning. We've been stung by a blue bottle. Yeah, just have a shower. There's nothing you can really do about it. All the sympathy just goes out the door. It's like, yeah. oh, you're okay. Can I get some ice for you? I'll give you a shower. All and then it's, it's like, yeah. beat it. We yeah. can't drown her. And it's your fault that we've missed it. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> can't deal, blue bottles. We can't deal with these minor That's right. Incidents you're right anymore. down the bottom of the pecking order. <laughs> I'm a bit like that with blue bottles all the time now. I just say to people, go and have a shower. Like, yeah. We haven't got time to be treating people like when these things can happen. And so just in my experience over time now, unless they're really bad and they're like almost anaphylactic to it, then I treat them. Or like we're super quiet, but I mean, look, they look like they were pretty quiet on that day too. So it just goes to show. Yeah. It's our job, it's not a good feeling. I'm not heaps stoked about it. Lydia, the ambulance. Usually we pride ourselves on what we see and you know, when you kind of miss something, you kind of feel shit out. Tapo is dead right. I mean, when I first started on this lifeguard service, one of the things that we prided ourselves on was like, we were the first one to every rescue. Like, and if you saw, saw a clubby going for a rescue, you if you didn't beat him to it, like, you're shout for beers that are, you know? Mm. Like, it's, it's a horrible like, feeling when you think you've missed something or, or like you think you could have done something differently or if you were doing this differently, like, but it's all a learning curve and I think, you know, that's one of the beauties of our job is you can never be perfect at it. So like you can always improve and learn new ways or, you know, even now kind of changing our tune from when we used to help people with blue bottles yep. to now just going, listen, yeah, go away. Got to prioritise <laughs> what the most important thing exactly. is and that's no one drowning. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch more videos like this, check out the Bondo Rescue channel.